At Complex Community Federal Credit Union, we understand financial capability provides a life of choices and opportunities. The most important building block in embracing financial capability is literacy. Our Reading First program's mission is to help foster the importance of love of reading. From pre-K to second grade, students are learning to read. From third grade on, students are reading to understand. We at CCFCU want to help make sure students have a solid foundation to equip them not only for success in school, but success in life. Hi guys, I'm Denise. I like to call myself Denise the Great. I'm gonna read a book with you. Are you ready? Let's do it, okay? This book is called A Bad Case of the Stripes. Ooh, do you see your stripes? Exciting. The book is written by David Shannon. That's the author, okay? The book has a spine, there's not really much on there, and the back has lots of stripes. So let's find out what the stripes are made from, okay? Let's start the book. This is the first page, and it just has A Bad Case of Stripes by David Shannon. Let's read. Camille Cream loved lima beans, but she never ate them. All her friends hated lima beans, and she wanted to fit in. Camille was always worried about what other people thought of her. Today, she was fretting even more than usual. It was the first day of school, and she couldn't decide what to wear. There were so many people to impress. She tried on 42 outfits, but none of them seemed quite right. She put on a pretty red dress and looked in the mirror. Then she screamed. There she is. Do you see her screaming face? Trying to put on and pick out her dress. Her mother ran into the room and screamed too. Oh my heavens, she cried. You're completely covered with stripes. This was certainly true. Camille was striped from head to toe. She looked like a rainbow. You see all the colors on her? She looks like a rainbow, huh? Miss Cream felt Camille's forehead. Do you feel all right? She asked. Well, I feel fine, Camille answered. But just look at me. You get back right into bed this instant her mother ordered you're not going to school today Camille was relieved she didn't want to miss the first day of school but she was afraid of what the other kids would say and she had no idea what to wear with those crazy stripes here she's in bed you see the thermometer she's probably got what maybe medicine or something to drink that afternoon dr bumble came and examined Camille. most extraordinary he exclaimed I've never seen anything like it. Are you having any coughing, sneezing, runny nose, aches, pains, chills, hot flashes, dizziness, drowsiness, shortness of breath, or uncomfortable twitching? No, Camille told him, I feel fine. Well then, Dr. Bumble said, turning to Miss Cream, I don't see any reason why she shouldn't go to school tomorrow. Here's some ointment that should help her clear up those stripes in a few days. If it doesn't, you know where to reach me. And then off he went. See, even her tongue is striped. Isn't that cool? He's examining her. The next day was a disaster. Everyone at school laughed at Camille. They said to her, Camille Crayon. And night of the living lollipop. She tried her best to act if everything was normal. But when the class said the Pledge of Allegiance, her stripes turned red, white, and blue and she broke out in stars. Oh my goodness, like the American flag. That's pretty cool, I think. The other kids thought this was great. One yelled out, let's see some purple polka dots. Sure enough, Camille turned all purple polka dotty. Someone else shouted, checkerboard, and a pattern of squares covered her skin. Soon everyone was calling out different shapes and colors, and poor Camille was changing faster than you can change channels on a TV. Oh my goodness, do you see her? She probably didn't like it, and the kids were making fun of her. That night, Mr. Harms, the school principal, called. I'm sorry, Miss Cream, he said. I'm going to have to ask you to keep Camille home from school. She's just too much of a distraction, and I've been getting calls from all the other parents. They're afraid those stripes might be contagious. Camille was so embarrassed, she couldn't believe that two days ago everyone liked her. Now nobody wanted to be in the same room with her. Her father tried to make her feel better. Is there anything I can get you, sweetheart? He asked. 
no thank you, sighed Camille. What she really wanted was a nice plate of lima beans, but she had been laughed at enough for one day. She wanted lima beans. Hmm. See, I think that's her mama and that's her dad. Hmm. Well, yes, I see, Dr. Bumble mumbled when Miss Cream phoned the next day. I think I'd better bring in the specialist. We'll be right over. About an hour later, Dr. Bumble arrived with four people in long white coats. He introduced them to the creams. This is Dr. Grop, Dr. Sponge, Dr. Cricket, and Dr. Young. Then the specialist went to work on Camilla. They squeezed and jabbed, tapped and tested. It was very uncomfortable. Well, it's not the mumps, said Dr. Grop. Or the measles, said Dr. Sponge. Definitely not the chicken pox, put in Dr. Cricket. Or sunburn, said Dr. Young. Try these, said the specialist. They each handled her a bottle filled with different colored pills. Take one of each before bed, said Dr. Grop. Then they filed out the front door, followed by Dr. Bumble. See, they're poking her and they're trying to figure out what's wrong with her. And she's got all these funky spots. They're even tickling her toes. Do you see that? That's funny. That night, Camille took her medicine. It was awful. When she woke up the next morning, she didn't feel different. But when she got dressed, her clothes didn't fit right. She looked in the mirror and there, staring back at her, was a giant multicolored pill with a face on it. Oh my goodness, she looks like a pill. She's still cute though, she's got the bow on her. You see that? Dr. Bumble rushed over as soon as Miss Cream called. But this time, instead of the specialist, he brought the experts. Dr. Gerd and Mr. Mellon were the finest scientific minds in the land. Once again, Camille was poked and prodded, looked at and listened to. The experts wrote down lots of numbers. Then they hurtled together and whispered. Dr. Gerd finally spoke. It might be a virus, he announced with authority. Suddenly, fuzzy little virus balls appeared all over Camellia. Or possibly some form of bacteria, said Dr. Mellon. Out popped squiggly little bacteria tails. Or it could be the fungus, said Dr. Gord. Instantly, Camellia was covered with different colored fungus blotches. The experts looked at Camellia, then at each other, we need to go over these numbers again, back to the lab, Dr. Gord explained. We'll call you when we know something. But the experts didn't have a clue, much less a cure. Ooh, everything that they said, it kept happening to her. See, the experts are just looking at her, trying to figure out what is wrong with poor Camilla. By now, the TV news had found out about Camilla. Reporters from every channel were outside her house, telling the story of the bizarre case of the incredible changing kid. Soon, a huge crowd was cramped out in front of the lawn. They're all over. They all want to know what's going on with her. Look, they're even inside the, trying to get in the door. Someone's peeking out there. The creams were swamped with all kinds of remedies from psychologists, allergists, herbalists, nutritionalists, psychics, and all medicine men, a guru, and even a veterinarian. Each so-called cured only added to poor Camilla's strange appearance until it was hard to even recognize her. She sprouts roots and berries and crystals and feathers and a long furry tail, but nothing worked. Oh my goodness, look at her. She's growing all sorts of things. Poor Camilla. One day, a woman who called herself an environmental therapist claimed that she could cure Camilla. Close your eyes, she said, breathe deeply and become one with your room. I wish you hadn't said that, Camilla groaned. Slowly, she started to melt into her walls of her room. Her bed became her mouth. Her nose was a dresser, and the two paintings were her eyes. The therapist screamed and ran from the house. What are we going to do, cried Miss Cream. It just keeps getting worse and worse. She began to sob. Oh my goodness, you see her eyes? There she is. Oh, and there's her bow, see? She always has her cute little bow on. Poor mom and dad, they're worried. Oh, look at her lips, I just saw that. At that moment, Miss Cream heard a quiet little knock at the front door. Knock, knock, knock. She opened it, and there stood an old woman 
who was just as plump and sweet as a strawberry. Excuse me, she said brightly, but I think I could help. Mm, she looks like a sweet grandma, huh? She went into Camille's room and looked around. My goodness, she said with a shaking of her head. What we have here is a bad case of the stripes, one of the worst I've seen. She pulled a container of small green beans from her bag. Here, she said, these might do the trick. Are those magic beans? asked Miss Cream. Oh my no, replied the kind old woman. There is no such thing. These are just plain old lima beans. I bet you'd like some, wouldn't you? asked Camille. Camille wanted a big heaping plate full of lima beans, more than just about anything. And she was still afraid to admit it. Yuck, she said. No one likes lima bean, especially me. Oh dear, the old woman said sadly. I guess I was wrong about you. She put the beans back in her bag and started toward the door. Camille watched the old woman walk away. Those beans would taste so good and being laughed at for eating them was nothing compared to what she was going through. She finally couldn't stand it. Wait, she cried. The truth is, I really love lima beans. Well, I thought so, the old woman said with a smile. She took a handful of beans and popped them into Camilla's mouth. Mmm, said Camilla. You see the beans in her mouth? Suddenly the branches, feathers, and squiggly tails began to disappear. Then the whole room swirled around. When it stopped, there stood Camilla, and everything was back to Norma. I'm cured, she shouted. Yes, said the old woman. I knew the real you was in there somewhere. She patted Camille on the head. Then she went outside and vanished into the crowd. See, there she is, back to normal. Big old smile and a pretty pink bow. Afterward, Camille wasn't quite the same. Some of the kids at school said that she was weird, but she didn't care a bit. She ate all the lima beans she wanted and she never had even touched the stripes again. See, she's happy now eating her lima beans. How wonderful, and oh, and her bow chain. Do you see how it's multicolored striped now? How fun. So see, you can be a little bit different and it's gonna be okay. I like that. Did you like that? All about Camille? I hope you did. Okay, let's do some questions. Are you ready? Why didn't Camille eat the lima beans? Hmm. I think maybe because Camille wanted to fit in, right? She wanted to be like everybody else. Nobody was eating lima beans. Everybody thought it were yuck, but secretly she liked them, right? Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next question. How many outfits did Camille try on? Do you remember? Hmm. She was trying on the outfits. The very first the book. How many did she try on? 42. You got it. Good job. Okay, the next question. You ready? Here it goes. So who cured Camille with the bad case of the stripes? Do you remember at the very end? Who helped it? The old lady, remember she looked like a strawberry? That's right, her. Good job. Okay, next question. What was the cure for the bad case of the stripes? What helped her at the end? The lima beans, you got it, yes. She gave her the lima beans, she ate them, and she magically appeared normal. Good job. Okay, last question, you ready? Okay. Is it okay to be ourselves? I hope you got this one right. It is. You're created completely different from everybody else, even your brothers and sisters. You have different traits, things you like, things you don't like, even if you like pink bows on your head or if you don't wear bows, if you like to wear shorts, you're completely different and that's gonna be okay to express yourself and the things that you like. And even if somebody else doesn't like it and they kind of make fun of you or they say mean things, it's okay. You are perfect. You are made great. Enjoy who you are.